me. Today I'm doing an episode number two of I guess what is a new series. How many series do I have at this point? How many? Does anyone know? Is, is anyone, anyone keeping, keeping track? track? Today, I'm gonna be taking some drawings that I've made and turning them into squishies. Two things that I love to do, draw and squish. She's paint squishies. So I've done this once before and it was really fun and you guys really enjoyed watching it. Once again, today I'll be using drawings from my art and creativity app called Spark. If you don't know what it is, oh, listen. I'm not the only one involved in this app. We have a small team who are very dedicated to Spark, who keep it fresh, who keep it going, making it function. Also, there's a whole community of sparklers who are the people who use the app, who actually make the art. It's a really fun place to be creative. So if you haven't already checked it out, the link is in the description to download. The basic idea is that the app provides you with three prompts every day, sparks, and you use these to create artwork. Everyone's art goes into an inspiration gallery so you can see what other people are doing for the same kind of spark. I cannot resist going back to my spark gallery for this series because I have so many characters that I've made in there. So let me start picking out the first drawing that I'm gonna use to inspire a squishy. Okay, so ignore the wrinkly pink background. My silicone mat is wrinkled. <laughs> Don't really have a better explanation for that. Here is Spark, and I'm gonna head on over to my personal gallery. I'm going on a deep dive. We are going all the way down to the very beginning, my very first Spark artworks. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in so long. But as we scroll up just a bit, the artwork quality quickly improves. And ha, this is what I want. This should look very familiar to you. What do you mean you don't recognize her? Guys, that's me. I'm, I'm looking, looking right, right at you. you. The spark for this was draw yourself as an animal. Hence, me self. It's, it's me self. self. And clearly she, I, needs to exist as a squishy. In order to make this happen, I'm gonna need just a few squishies. Just these. But let me not overwhelm you. It's a lot at once and I know that you can be sensitive. So one at a time. First, I needed a cloud. Not only does she have her head in the clouds, she got her booty in the clouds too. And this is the only suitable cloud squishy that I had in my collection. Not sure why it's blue, but that's fine. fine. I love squishing it. Something about just digging my fingers into a cloud. The star is very cute, but don't get too attached. First thing, I'm gonna rip the star out of his home. <gasps> No! I told you not to get too attached. No, no, shh, stop, stop crying. I did save him in my parts box until further notice. That is the box of chopped up squishy parts that I've saved. What is even in here? Oh, a torso. Okay, some ears. This cone. Hey, I could actually use this today. Anyway, Cloud is ready. Now for the bear herself, I found three options. Option number one, this big headed panda. You ready to see another panda death? No. <gasps> I'm always down. Problem with this one, the eyes are very indented. The ears are too small. The body is too small and the arms are down when they should be up. So the panda is actually safe. She's not good enough to kill. Then we've got these two, which are actually both cats. So the ears will need to be replaced. They both have their arms up, but this one has a weird like grabbing hand kind of situation. And while I'm at it, this squishy is just so ugly. I'm sorry, but like, what are your eyes doing all the way up on your forehead like that? I ended up going with this little fellow. Only problem is she's got a spoon in her hand that is gonna need to be removed. Don't take away my spoon. I'm sorry, I'm taking it. It was a part of me. Quit crying about it, it's a spoon. After cleaning that up a bit more and chopping off that tiny nose that I almost didn't notice, it's time to fit the bear to be, she's still a cat, into the cloud. So no worries, just have to chop off the lower half of her body, hollow out the cloud a bit, and keep trimming until the two pieces fit nicely. Then I'm gonna hot glue them together and simply rubber band oh that broke okay simply rubber band them together until dry and once that's ready I did use the glue to fill in a bit because there were some pretty egregious gaps uh, that's a lot of glue I used next I'm just gonna chop off the cat ears and bring in the panda oh so we are gonna have a panda slaughter today oh goody I'm just gonna steal the ears off of this because girlie's got some ears man these are the largest bear ears I could find in in my collection, so. Sorry boy, you're going straight to the hopeless bin now. I'm gonna go ahead and put these new ears on, and instead of taking the time to actually trim those ears properly, I'm just slathering some glue all over them. Come on, that's bad form. People are watching this, what are you doing? Well, the ears are on. So now it's just the ice cream scoop, the ice cream cone, and a turtle. Yeah, do you not see a turtle in this picture? Oh, yes! He's right there. 
I'm primarily interested in the head of the turtle. I'm gonna use it for a cherry. I mean, he wasn't a very good turtle anyway, so he's probably better off this way. And now to glue everything on. The original doesn't show a really defined ice cream scoop like the one that I'm using. However, there is quite a bit of height and volume there. So I thought that using this little scoop may help to replicate that look a little bit. And once all of that was on, I realized, oh my gosh, the feet. I forgot the freaking feet. So I found the bottom half of this squishy. I immediately recognize it. It belongs to that pig looking unicorn. She's got some big old feet on her. So I'll take those. Thank you. And this is where things get a little hairy. Yeah, I know. That's a gross expression. I'll try not to use it again. These feet just did not want to stick onto this cloud. It was a big struggle getting these on, but two gallons of hot glue later, here we are. I have just slathered that stuff on. I normally try to avoid using this much glue, but this was a desperate situation. With most of the chaos behind us, let's go in with the puffy paint to start smoothing some of this mess out. Even though this is definitely the ugly stage of every squishy project, I actually really enjoy this part. It's pretty satisfying to kind of seal everything together. And it's quite the relief because once this puffy paint goes on, there's very little chance of anything falling off or coming apart. But oh boy, this squishy required some serious puffy paint because there are one, two, three, four, five, six squishies stuck together here. And just so many rough areas that need special attention. One entire bottle of puffy paint later and I still have one more coat to apply. So here we go. Looking at the mess that I had created, I was getting really worried, but I have put so much time into it at this point. I have to at least try to make something out of it. The next step is the white base coat, which really highlights all that lovely clumpy texture that I thought I was smoothing out. You, you missed, missed a spot. spot. Oh well, then I noticed the face is still engraved into it. So I got to fill that in. And I had a little visitor in my art room. I'm about to paint this thing. Can I draw it with you? Sure. Squeeze really hard. <laughs> There you go. And with the expert help of Mini-Me, the face is all smoothed out. So we get to finally move on to the color. I started with this color, but it looked a little bit darker than the original. So I added some white and I started painting on that new color, but it still seemed a little bit too dark. So I added some more white and half a container of white paint later. It was barely a noticeable difference. Close enough, I'm going with it. After doing that, I'm actually starting to feel some hope creeping back for this squishy. This may not be the absolute worst. Yay! Only time will tell. Next step, I'm gonna tackle the rainbow on the face. I have some matching colors here, so let's do this. So about Spark, my art and creativity app from where this bear was born. It's been about a year since we originally launched Spark. And if it's been a while since you've popped in, pop in. There's a lot of new things now. Spark is available in so many more countries than before. And we just launched subscriptions, so you can now unlock exclusive benefits and help support Spark to keep it growing. We even have a new feature where you can upload and share your Create This Book pages from all three books. And that's all on top of the fact that it's honestly just a fun place to create and a great community to be a part of. But now back to my bear. This bear is somewhat of a self-portrait, which I hate doing. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this. Every time I've made an actual self-portrait, I've wanted to die, cry, vomit in that order. But this was kind of a fun version of that because it's a portrait of yourself as an animal. I didn't really overthink it that much. I went with a bear because I like bears. And I put a rainbow on her face because I like rainbows. And she's in a cloud because I like clouds. I added a bunch of dessert toppings on her head because I like dessert toppings. Shut up. I went in to paint the cherry, which was kind of an awkward shape. Turns out cherries and turtle heads aren't always exactly the, the same. same. Good nugget of knowledge for you. After doing some miscellaneous touch-ups, I'm painting in the arms and the little snout. And here come her eyes, the little toe pads. Oh yeah, so the arms. Let's talk about them. The arms are not exactly in the same place as the drawing. However, I thought maybe I could just paint in the toe pads and fake it. But you know what? This, no. Who do you think you're fooling here? That looks ridiculous. So I'm letting go of the idea. It's just gonna have to be a little bit different than the original. I did go for a more serious expression on the bear. I like everything rainbow and sprinkles and cute, but I also come with a healthy dose of sarcasm and just a sprinkle of cynicism. Let's have that represented on the face. Finally, I'm gonna add the sprinkles. It's 
perfect. Here is the final drawing to Squishy. Now, there are some obvious differences between the two. However, I think it's a strong resemblance, and I'm extremely happy with how this came out, especially considering the questionable beginning of this process. I don't want to name her after myself because I feel like that would just be way too weird calling a Squishy Mariah. Ugh, I'm just cringing. And it's also not even supposed to be me exactly. It's the animal version. So maybe some version of my name, Mo, Rye, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth, Beth, Liz. Oh, she can be a Liz. Hi, Liz. Hi. Okay, bye, Liz. We're on to the next. So I'm gonna travel up a bit in my gallery. Quick pit stop at this pickle version of a seahorse. I don't know why, but I have been obsessed with this thing since I made it. But I'm actually on my way to this toad or frog. No, it's, it's a toad. I know that there are actual formal differences between toads and frogs, but um, she has toad vibes. The spark for this one actually had nothing to do with a toad or a frog. It was create a bouquet. And for whatever reason, I decided to create that bouquet growing out of the head of a girly toad. Immediately, I knew that there were only two squishies in my entire collection that would work for this project. This bouquet squishy I purchased for myself a long, long time ago. I just thought maybe one day, I'll have a use for it. Well, six, six years, years later, later, that day has come. And this frog squishy, I believe my only frog squishy, I killed the other one for a cat. Clearly, all we have to do is place the bouquet on top of the toad's head, which uh, may or may not be physically possible. The flowers are way too large. They're also not even close to the same kind of flowers that are in the drawing. We're still gonna try this, okay? So I'm gonna cut off the bottom of the bouquet and try to create a shape that will form around the crown on the toad. Oh, a crown, like a frog prince. Yeah, it's definitely a frog. Who wants to wear a crown right between their eyeballs? I did trim up the bottom of it a little bit because clearly the bouquet in the drawing is a lot thinner, but I can't go too thin because then the flowers are just gonna flop right over. Finally, I'm applying some glue to make this toad flower toad happen. And after carefully applying glue all the way around and then laying down a couple layers of puffy paint, miraculously, this actually worked and it does stand up on its own, which is just such a shock. Next is the base coat, and halfway through applying that, I realized why am I painting this white when the original color is green and I'm just gonna be painting it green again. Oh, okay. I guess I just did it out of habit, but um, we're already here, so let's finish it out. Here's where I decided I wanted the webbed feet to be a little bit less webbed, webbed kind of giving me the creeps. So I applied a thick coat of puffy paint over the feet to kind of tone that down a bit and soften the shape a little. And yay, it's time to add the color. The first video I did like this, I actually printed out the artworks to use for reference, which I did try to do again this time, but my printer just all of a sudden stopped being able to print the color yellow. Funny timing, since I was just complaining about her performance last time. Do you think she heard me? Once the toad is all green, I'm creating a lighter color for the tummy patch. Originally, I kind of hated the little bumps all over the squishy, but then I realized, oh, I literally drew little bumps on my toad. Okay. Okay, so I guess those are staying. Next, I'm gonna move up to the flowers and I have these colors to use, which is the same color scheme as the original. Of course, the squishy bouquet is all roses while the drawing has uh, lilies, daisies, carnations. carnations. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping if I just paint these roses in the same colors, it'll kind of give the same vibe at least. Instead of daisies, I just painted white roses with yellow centers. Mm -hmm. I do miss the daisies, yeah, but this is fine too, right? After painting in way too many flower crevices, I'm gonna take a break from that and work on the face. I was pretty nervous about how this was gonna look because quite frankly, I am kind of in love with the original face. And this one is just clearly so differently shaped. There's not that much room for the eyes because the base of the flowers is so much wider, which is necessary because it needs that support, but it's definitely not as cute looking. All things considered, I think this face didn't turn out too bad. Finally, time to make just a quick 200 more touch-ups to each of those flower crevices, and voila! From drawing to squishy. Of course, this is not a perfect replica of the drawing, and I have to acknowledge, I think the drawing is cuter, but I think considering this turned out pretty darn good, I'm honestly really happy with it, okay? This is definitely one of my most unique squishies. This is not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. Some people are just gonna hate it. It is mine. Give 
me some toad with a bouquet growing out of its head tea and I'm gonna drink it in honor of the missing daisies her name is Daisy oh this toad she's just so weird looking she looks a little bit derpy but I can't help it I just really love her these were both pretty challenging squishies to create but I'm so satisfied with how they came out I had so much fun doing this thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next Friday bye